Okay, good afternoon, guys. Um, all right, so I figured out a way how to put something on the screen over there, like for them, but also for you. I'm legit, I know, I know. No applause, please. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen real fast. I wanna show you guys something just in case you didn't see it yet. Okay, so as you guys know, in guides, I always put any readings, any notes, anything we go over, I put it in the guides folder, right? Right here. And I, I'm actually gonna publish this one for you because that was the reading from Friday. Okay, also remember, you know, when we have a day and it is an asynchronous day, it still means you have that class. It just means that you don't have a live Zoom and you're not following a schedule. You're getting the work done at your own time. So think about it like the first marking period. I had several students message me, you know, during the snow days, asynchronous days on Thursday and Friday from all my classes, kind of asking certain questions like, oh, what day is it? Does it mess up the AB thing? No, it doesn't. The only time that it'll mess up or affect our AB schedule is if there's a snow day and schools are completely off, like that one day a couple weeks ago, if you guys remember, um, or if like there's a day off that's scheduled, we just skip that day off and you go. So anytime we don't have school, whether it's a holiday or whatever, you skip that day and you move on to that next day. So you never have an A day twice in a row or a B day twice in a row. So that's how you got to think about it, okay? I added a videos folder right here. So any videos that I show, and these two right here, we're gonna see today, but any videos that we, that we watch in class, I'm gonna put it in the videos. Just an easy way for you guys to find it, okay? That way you're not looking through the week's folders and looking through stuff. I'm trying to make it as student friendly for you, okay? By now, honestly, you should really know, you know what you're doing, okay? The assignment, later on that we're gonna go over is the one from Friday. Friday was an asynchronous day. If you didn't do that assignment, you're already behind, okay? Since we're gonna review it, you're not gonna get full credit if you didn't do it yet. You will get credit though. You're only gonna get like a point off. So you can still get an A. You just have to make sure that you do it, okay? Um, this is the assignment I'm talking about, 219 asynchronous assignment, big capital letters, okay? trying to make it easy for you guys. Um, and it was just a reading with questions at the end. Um, this is me making a video in the dark at home with my two-year-old running around in circles yelling. And hopefully you didn't hear that part, but actually she's almost three. She'll be three. We're gonna have an Elsa birthday, frozen birthday party with horses. Cause that's what she wants. She wants to ride a pony. She's gonna ride a pony. All right, so this is the reading down here. And then you know, the assignments down at the end where you click it, you answered questions. So you should have already done that. If you didn't do it, it's okay, right? You're, you can still get credit, but you need to get on top of it. I only see you guys every other day. It's important to get it done. This is the assignment, 219 asynchronous assignment that we're gonna start, that we're gonna go over together later on today, okay? But I just wanted to show that to you guys, All right? What's that? You did yours in homeroom? Look at you. Awesome. All right. So this is the part where I'm a professional now. Boom. Okay. Oh, someone's coming in. Okay. And then I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you can see it too. The only thing I have to figure out is I have to get like some, what's it called? Speakers for you guys to make it louder, but it's okay. You guys will still be able to hear it. What we're gonna do, we're gonna watch two videos today. The first video is gonna, it's talking a little bit about the CNS, the, you know, the brain and the spinal cord, not so much the brain, more so like the signals and the movements of the signals and what can happen. Um, talking about your brain, your vertebrae bones, you're not your brain, your back, your backbones. It's been a long day already, I don't, I don't know. Um, and what happens if your backbones get misaligned and what that can do and what you can do to, to fix that. So that's, it's only three minutes. It's not long. And so let's watch it together. Did you know that the most important part of your entire body is your central nervous system? Your central nervous system, also known as the master system, is made up of your brain and your spinal cord, and it controls every single function in your entire body. In fact, your central nervous system is so important that it's the only body part that is totally encased in bone 
for its protection. Starting at the top is your brain. And your brain is the central processing unit of your body. And it coordinates and computes all the electrical signals that are sent throughout your nervous system and your entire body. So from your brain, electrical impulses or signals are sent down your spinal cord and travel all the way to the base of your spine. And branching off of your spinal cord are these fine thread-like structures called spinal nerves. And they exit between the vertebrae of the spinal column to supply all your muscles, cells, and organs. And from there, the electrical impulses are sent back up to the brain in a feedback loop. And at every level in your spine, the exiting spinal nerves supply specific muscles and organs. For instance, starting from your lower back, these spinal nerves supply such structures as your legs, reproductive organs, bladder, kidneys, and colon. As we move up the spine to the upper back or thoracic spine, the exiting spinal nerves supply such organs as your liver, stomach, heart, and lungs. Moving up further to your neck, these nerves supply such structures as your eyes, ears, throat, and arms. Now, in a healthy spine, your spinal bones or vertebrae are in proper alignment, and the cushioning or shock absorbers between the vertebrae, called intervertebral discs, are thick and healthy. As such, correct spinal movement is possible and the spinal nerves are able to freely exit the spine, sending nerve impulses from the brain to the targeted muscles and organs without any interference. However, from poor posture, falls, a car accident, or some other injury, your vertebrae can become misaligned. This misalignment is what chiropractors call vertebral subluxation complex, or just subluxation. When a subluxation occurs, your vertebrae can then press on these existing spinal nerves and interfere and block these nerve impulses. When this happens, nerve damage begins and your body starts to dysfunction. Although potentially painless at first, symptoms can develop rapidly. And when a subluxation is left untreated, your spine begins to decay. Your discs begin to thin and wear down, and your vertebrae start to deform and degenerate, leading to the development of these spurs, or osteophytes, which then further compresses and damages your nerves. So when a subluxation occurs in your lower back, it can cause back pain, sciatica, bladder weakness, irritable bowel syndrome, and erectile dysfunction. A subluxation in your upper back can cause respiratory problems, digestive problems, and decreased energy levels. And subluxations in your neck can cause headaches, dizziness, tinnitus, carpal tunnel syndrome, numbness, tingling, and weakness to one or both of your arms. Fortunately, chiropractic can help. In fact, chiropractors are the only healthcare professionals that are specifically and adequately trained to detect and correct vertebral subluxations. And through a series of precise chiropractic adjustments, your chiropractor will restore your spine's proper alignment, remove nerve interference, and return your body to its optimal health. And it's important to note, your body has the ability to heal itself, so long as there is no interference. So having a healthy spine is not just about removing pain and symptoms, but achieving your body's maximum health potential. So the next one, whoa, I don't know what that Hold on, stop. All right, so actually I, I get headaches a lot and it has nothing really to do with, but the reason that my neck hurts. And so I work out a lot, right? And I also carry all of my stress in my shoulders and my neck always. And a lot of people do, like when you get really stressed, sometimes you're like sore or you're tired and you don't really know why. That, and if you're working out a lot and you're not stretching enough or you sleep weird, you start to get the pain in your neck. And then every single time I notice when I'm in pain, my head is always hurting. And whether it's uh, I get a massage or I go to the chiropractor or I take a shower or I use a heating pad, my neck feels better, my head, headache goes away all the time. And it's just something to think about, those few things that they talked about on how, you know, you can have digestive issues, you can have you know, fatigue or you're tired and you don't really know why, bladder issues, all of that at the end could be a result of your back's just misaligned. And, and it could be an easy fix as to go to the chiropractor. Maybe not. I mean, I wasn't, I was like 26 or 27 the first time I ever went to a chiropractor. And I played three varsity sports in high school. So, you know, when you're young, you don't really think about it because your body's just so great. And then you get older and you're like falling apart like me. So anyway, all right.
So this next video is an interactive video, which is what I like about it. It's called Brain Tricks. It talks about your brain and how we have what's called fast thinking and slow thinking without really realizing it. And it's interactive. So it's gonna ask you to do some parts. Those of you at home, I think it says something about like saying the numbers out loud. You can do that. You can do it in your head too. Here, just do it in your head, but it's pretty cool. So just watch it, see if you kind of figure out some of the things and, um, and have some fun. Again, it's just a few minutes long. You may not realize it, but your brain actually processes information in two very distinct ways. Like when you look at this photo, you instantly know she has blonde hair, is visibly angry, and likely has some choice words to yell. Without any effort, you experienced fast thinking. But if you look at the following problem, something different happens. Sure, you immediately know it's a multiplication problem, and you knew you could solve it if you had the energy, but didn't. If you do try, your muscles will tense, your pupils will dilate, and your heart rate will increase. Now, you've experienced slow thinking. These two systems of fast and slow thinking dictate much of our perception and reaction in life. Take these lines for example. It's clear that they're different lengths, but if you measure them, they're actually the exact same length. Even now that you know, system one or your fast thinking can't stop seeing the illusion because it acts automatically. A similar effect is seen here, which figure is the largest? Again, they're all the same size, but the suggestion of perspective and depth causes your system one to interpret the picture as three-dimensional, even though it's on a flat two-dimensional surface. It's making quick work of the available information, and so your conscious system two, or slow thinking, must compensate after the fact and choose not to believe your intuition or instinct. Want to see your system two in action? I'll show you a string of four digits, you read them aloud, then add one to each of the original digits. If the card reads 3795, the correct response would be 4806. We'll then go to the next card and you'll do the same, followed by the next card. Ready? Go. Few people can cope with more than four digits, but even harder is add three. The interesting bit is that though your pupils would have dilated, you often become effectively blind when you fully engage system two. Did you notice the color of the text change? Or how about the fact that the numbers completely changed when I put them off to the side? Listen to the following puzzle. A bat and a ball cost $1.10. The bag costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Chances are your system one intuition was yelling 10 cents, but this appealing system one answer we know is wrong. In fact, the correct answer is five cents. Even if you worked out the correct answer, you likely thought of 10 cents along the way. System one is trying to work out an answer as quickly and seamlessly as possible, which is extremely beneficial in everyday life. If every activity required full mental effort, it would be exhausting. But knowing this allows us to understand that not all of our first impressions are correct. How many animals of each kind did Moses take into the ark? So few people detect what is wrong with this question that it's been dubbed the Moses illusion. In fact, Moses took no animals, Noah did. Again, our brain invests as little resources as necessary so that things run quickly and smoothly. Because Moses is not abnormal in the biblical context, system one unconsciously detects an association between Moses and ark and quickly accepts the question. In a similar way, System 1 generates context without you knowing. Reading each of the following may seem fairly simple. A, B, C, Anne approached the bank, and 12, 13, 14. But your brain actually interpreted these ambiguous statements without you ever knowing. You could have read it as A, 13, C, or 12, B, 14, but your brain created the context unconsciously. Also, you likely imagined a woman with money on her mind walking towards a building with tellers. But if the sentence before this was, they were floating gently down the river, the entire scene would have changed because bank is no longer associated with money. Without an explicit context, System 1 quickly generates one based on previous experience. In this case, you've likely visited more banks than rivers, and so the context is resolved accordingly. This ties into a concept called priming. For example, if I said wash, how would you complete this word fragment? Most would see soap, but had I just shown you the word eat, you'd be more likely to see soup. In this way, both eat and wash prime your thoughts. Though System 2 likes to think that it's in charge and knows what's going on, the truth is that priming effects have even been shown to affect and modify behavior. These arise in System 1, and you have no conscious access to them. If you'd like to learn more about the thinking systems... 
All right, so just to show you guys, because I've had people in the past, wait, the, the colors didn't change. That didn't happen. So, all right, so right now it's green, right? And like a reddish. And then after a few of these, you'll see the numbers change when he moves it over. Now it's pink and green. And the numbers are changing 1574 to 5924. Now it's pink. And then it's purple and yellow. It's pretty cool. I remember when I saw that first time, I was like, no way. And I fast forward, I was like, that's not right. So, okay, good. All right, so what we're going to do now, and I want to kind of go back for a minute so we can. I can give you guys just kind of like a heads up a little of what happened last period and yesterday. Both fifth period for some reason, right? Uh, they didn't do it. They refused to do this next activity. And what is it? I had you guys, I had them go into breakout groups. So yesterday I had them go into breakout groups, groups of like three people, right? And I know it could be awkward. You don't know each other. Uh, a lot of you guys probably have your screen off, so it's awkward. Welcome to my life, okay? Um, or you don't talk and you're chatting or you don't chat or talk and it's just silence and you don't do anything. And then the teacher comes around and jumps into the breakout groups and gets upset because no one's doing anything and then, blah, right, gets all mad. So I'm giving you guys, uh, you know, just an example of what happened yesterday. Now I brought them back. We had a conversation and I gave them a second chance because that's what school's about. Second chances, learning from your mistakes, moving forward, seeing, you know, what you can change. But I'm telling you guys this now so that, you know, you don't make that mistake. Um, and it worked with my sixth and seventh period classes yesterday when I told them about fifth period and we didn't even have to stop and they all did what they had to do. And they got over the awkwardness because that's life because you got to talk to people sometimes, right? Um, last period was kind of super weird because I told them the same thing I'm telling you, sent them into their breakout rooms, breakout groups, whatever. I went into six different rooms out of like nine, nothing. One step further, I had three people in front of me and I was like, all right, this is going to be easy. Why don't you three just work together? They're literally in front of me, right? Nothing. Refused. So they got another assignment. It was like 20 minutes in and I couldn't let them leave that early. And so they had another assignment. I'm not threatening you. I'm just saying, you know, listen, you're going to be in situations in life where you need to learn to have the skill to talk to people that maybe you don't know, maybe put yourself in an uncomfortable position for maybe a couple minutes. It's not that serious. Okay. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to open that assignment that you did last week on Friday. The one that I showed you earlier that we will be working on today, which is found if you forgot in the 216 folder, week of 216, and it is the asynchronous assignment from Friday's class, which was the 19th. So open that up now, and you guys, I'm gonna be putting you guys in breakout groups where you guys will be going over the answers that you got. That's what you're doing. You're gonna go over the answers that you got just for a few minutes, all right? And then I'll send you, I'll bring you guys back here and we can kind of review together. Are there any questions with what we're doing? 